things that are really important here that came out of the feasibility study are which way is the groundwater moving? And the reason that's important is because the nature of the problem is that the facility leaked, leaked these chemicals called phthalates. And phthalates are found in plastics. The ones that are used here are lighter than water. I'll show you some pictures about that. So they won't dissolve in water. And they're thick and gooey like molasses. And the older they get, the thicker and the gooier they get. And the less likely they are, less able they are to dissolve in water. But they, they leak out from this central area. And the issue is, did it get in the groundwater? So we need to know which way the groundwater is flowing. So this, this figure gives you an idea that groundwater is flowing in this direction, right? So groundwater is not flowing this way, pretty much. Now, we're not down there, and so we can't get detailed measurements of everything that's going on in every few foot area. But we, we can get the general flow of groundwater. Does that make sense? You with me? Okay, next slide. Then. <laughs> well, the feasibility study does, you know, what are you going to do about cleanup? So the RI report is where we got the information on groundwater flow. So what are we concerned about in this? Well, I mentioned these um, phthalates, which are also called light, non-aqueous phase liquids. L N A P L. L and apples. They're not as good as real apples. Don't eat them. So those are the light, non-aqueous phase liquids. And then the other chemical that's turned off is this first one listed here, trichloroethylene. It's a solvent, and like many other solvents, it vaporizes very easily and readily. And it's used and it has been used to clean equipment frequently. It, it's a contaminant in groundwater and in soil in places where you might have had a big industrial operation for many years, sometimes for dry cleaning, older dry cleaning facilities sometimes for old um, shops and machine shops. Uh, I've worked at a couple of military places where they had serious problems with trichloroethylene. But trichloroethylene also evaporates so readily and so easily that it creates two problems. If it gets down into the groundwater, it's going to evaporate back up. At least it can, unless there's a barrier. And at the place where it's dripping into or going into the groundwater, it can evaporate right from there. And the problem with that latter point is if you have a barrel that's leaking over here on the floor of the factory and it drips for five years or ten years and contaminates the groundwater underneath where it sits, and then you close the factory, and you take the barrel away. There's no evidence left unless you found the TCE, which is what's happened in this particular case. It's very volatile, comes up in the air, and the state, as well as everybody else who deals with Superfund sites, is concerned that there may be vapors in the soil that are left around from this TCE drip, drip, dripping. Now, these light non-aqueous phase liquids, the phthalates, they don't do this, they don't vaporize, unless you heat them up really, really hot, hundreds of degrees, you have to vaporize, you have to really heat them up to get them to vaporize. Mm -hmm. So we're worried about two different major chemicals. There are a few other chemicals, but these are the two that have been found in the remedial investigation report. And one of the things that we did was look back to make sure that the original list of chemicals that they were looking at was the right list, and it was complete. And the answer is yes. And that did they find anything else ever anywhere? <clears throat> well, the answer is yes. There were a few other chemicals found in trace amounts in a few places, isolated. Now, I'll mention here that we had a recent month, and the, the uh, the developers, uh, technical consultant who's currently in the process of doing the work that keeps it from getting worse and, and is ex 
extracting these L samples and has done the investigation. As recently, and they do a monthly report, and their most recent monthly report indicated that one of the uh, shipments of material taken off site from the wells that are taking these phthalates off had PCBs in them. Well, PCBs are a common contaminant, but they weren't previously known on this site. And so we did the same thing with the PCBs. We very specifically went back and said, were they on the list of chemicals that they were working, looking for? And we found them. And did they find any PCBs anywhere, anytime, any place? And there were two, I think only two reports, of very low level soil contamination, but nothing in the oil. So I don't know what that result is. That may be a spurious finding. It could be um, somebody made a mistake in the analysis. It could be that they were shipping it away in a truck that already had PCBs in it, and that's a possibility. But those are, that's a report that we just saw the other day, literally, and so we're still investigating. And in fact, DEC is looking into it as well. They're trying to figure that out. So the trichloroethylene is located in this part of the site, okay? So this part of the site is uh, principally on the north side, and it did get into the groundwater. And ground and TCE, unlike the, uh, the phthalates, does dissolve in water. So we would expect to find it in the groundwater, the, the groundwater that's sh fairly shallow, not 400 feet down, but just tens of feet down. And we would also wonder and probably expect that if it's that volatile, it's gonna, we're going to find it in the soil, in the soil vapor. So I'm going to point out a couple of different things here. Um, number one is, it's hard to see from back there, but this figure, this highly blue concentrated is the highest concentration, and then the green is a slightly lower concentration, and the yellow is the lowest concentration. Those images are based on groundwater wells that are drilled down, and they sample them, and they pull them back. And uh, they did a couple of different things here. Number one, you can also see a large number of, I don't know, in the back of the room, do you see a large number of dots all over the site, dark dots? Those are all the wells. So they didn't just sample in a couple of places. It was basically a grid of sampling. And that's the right way to do it. And what they should do, and that's what we found, is that they, they sampled until they didn't find any more. You want to sample till clean, which is what they want. When you want to clean up, you're going to be sampling that strategy. You want to keep sampling, um, digging until you've got all the contamination, if that's the goal. So we've got data that show, they've got data, and they present data that, that indicate the highest concentration is there, so it's probably the source. The most likely event is what I was describing, the sort of thing that I explained. You've got a barrel, maybe it was uh, TCE they were using, maybe it was waste TCE, it's sitting on the factory floor, it's leaking. It leaks for a number of years, nobody notices because it's such a slow leak. It gets into the groundwater. And I only say that based on about a half a dozen other places where I've seen the same thing happen. And not just industrial, but also military. So those, those figures are estimates based on the computer programs. Right? It's possible that they're a little bit off, and it's possible they're a little bit um, worse. It's possible they're not that wide and extensive. Because you'll see, we don't have any samples up here. And I want to say something about here. Because these are private properties up on the north side of the street. And in order to get samples in there, DEC um, and or the developers and their consultants need to get permission from the property owners to go over there and uh, put a well in. They can get permission from the city to put a well on the sidewalk. And if you walk over there, you've seen something. They're not very big, only a few inches across. Does that make sense? So the other thing, if you get to looking at one of these figures, is that you'll see these boxes. And these boxes show the, the data. Those are the numbers, the concentrations of TCE that are, that are found <clears throat> in those wells on what dates and at what depth. Next slide. Okay, so that was groundwater. So do we have any evidence, and did they provide any evidence? Well, they went looking to see if there was any TCE in the 
soil above the groundwater? And uh, lo and behold, the answer is yes. And that's not a surprising thing based on what we know about this chemical. It, it vaporizes very easily. Okay, in this, in this image you can see a better depiction of exactly what buildings are where. So you can see that these are private properties and they're commercial. They're commercial operations. Okay? And the senior citizens center is right here. Okay, any questions about this? Does this make sense? So they went sampling looking for vapor, TCE vapor in the soil. Next slide, please. And if we do the same sort of thing with the TCE vapor that we did with the TCE and soil, we get a computer program that will draw you an image of where that, that plume might be, that area of contamination. We get this. And, you know, the good news is that we continue to see that the highest concentration is over there on the site, it's underneath uh, the building, and it's a place that's accessible, and that it, it extends approximately in the same direction. But you see, vapors can move differently than liquids, right? Because they can find a different pathway, they can move easier. What's not known, what the remedial investigation report cannot report, is data for soil vapor in those buildings or on those properties because they didn't get access. That's a data gap that they couldn't fill, that they wanted to fill, that um, we wanted them to fill, that everybody wanted them to fill. Everybody wanted to know, are there TCE vapors in the soil over in that direction? Because we know it's over here, and our computer estimates suggest that it's across the street and under the building, and so we'd like to know, but we can't because we don't have permission. Okay? Um, but the other, the other thing is you'll notice that it doesn't spread the southwest direction. It's got a little bit of spread in the southerly direction. And you'd expect that because it's under a building slab. It's an industrial building. 